When can I use over-the-counter skincare and when should I get a prescription? Well, this is a really common question that I get because many people are really hesitant or unable to consult with a dermatologist. Sometimes they're a little nervous to go see a doctor or maybe they just don't have access to a dermatologist because of location or insurance. This is a difficult question to answer so generally because obviously everyone's skin is different and a lot of it depends on the severity of the skin condition that you're looking to address. If you're able to see a dermatologist, there are definitely more options available to us to treat various skin conditions. We are able to prescribe stronger medications that have higher percentages of active ingredients. We have more active ingredients to choose from and more options outside of just topical creams and lotions. We can prescribe oral medications or even injections. There are many very common skin conditions though, when mild or moderate, they can be treated really effectively with over-the-counter skincare products. If you're walking the drugstore aisle, you will see solutions for acne, anti-aging, eczema, psoriasis, fungal rashes, things like athlete's foot, and even getting into warts, skin tags, and cold sores. If you can't get to a dermatologist, I think the best approach is to first understand what it is that you have, understand the different ways to treat it, then choose the products and solutions that you believe will work best for your specific situation. If it doesn't work, then you can try something else or go see a dermatologist. In general, over-the-counter products are gonna be safe to use as long as you use them as directed and pay attention to the warning labels. We have a great resource for you if you're looking for more information about various skin conditions and the best way to treat them with over-the-counter products. Head over to my skincare line, slmdskincare.com and browse the expert advice section or search for your skin condition or symptoms. Hopefully you're gonna find some useful information there that's gonna help. Are acne products safe for teenagers? Okay, I get excited with this question because it means that I have friends out there who are getting started on their healthcare skin journey so young. And honestly, it is never too early to take care of your skin. In our teens, we start to produce sebum, which can get the ball rolling on acne. So washing twice daily with something like a salicylic acid cleanser are gonna help to keep your pores clear. And for the occasional pimples, you can try my salicylic acid spot treatment, which is a roll-on type treatment that you can just stick in your pocket and take with you. Now, if you've got active teen acne, the best thing you can do is to start something like my SLMD Skincare Acne System, which combines the most effective over-the-counter ingredients and is perfectly safe for teens. Even retinol, you guys, was originally developed to treat teen acne, and it wasn't until later that we discovered that it helps to ward off wrinkles. If you have sensitive skin, you can try my Sensitive Skin Acne System, which inhibits acne-causing bacteria with sulfur, which is gentler than benzoyl peroxide. What is the significance of percentages in skincare ingredients? Okay, this is a good one because people are really confused about this and I totally understand why it's confusing because unless you're a cosmetic chemist, it's really almost impossible to look at a percentage on a label and be able to predict what it's actually going to do for your skin. But basically, we're talking about the concentration of an active ingredient and what is allowed in over-the-counter versus prescription products in the US is regulated by the FDA. So for example, take glycolic acid, which you can get over the counter in concentrations of up to 30%. But we can't just assume that if 12% is good, 30% must be better. And that's because we have so many variables. So imagine we have a product that says 10% glycolic acid, say, and what does this tell us? We understand that's the concentration of that acid, that perhaps it's more potent than a 5% product, but also important is the combination of other ingredients in the formula. How are they interacting with each other? How are they impacting what's called the bioavailability or the efficacy of the active ingredient? What other skincare are you using and in what order? Are you essentially neutralizing that active ingredient with one in another product? Or maybe the opposite, maybe you're compounding the effects and you're going to get irritation and sensitivity. I could be here all day and we haven't even gotten to the fact that everyone's skin reacts differently to a given skincare ingredient, let alone different concentrations. Honestly, this is why I'm a less is more kind of dermatologist. I like to say, don't crack a nut with a sledgehammer. Start with a lower concentration of over-the-counter ingredients and work your way up, only if you don't see results in the first few months. Retinol is a great example. It's not as strong as prescription tretinoin, but over the long term, it works perfectly well for most people with less irritation, which means you're gonna stick with it longer. 
Where I do like to see more potent concentrations of active ingredients is in something like an acne spot treatment, where we're targeting a small area for a short amount of time. Typically, we also recommend more potent levels for body skin because it's tougher and thicker than facial skin overall.